Madam Clerk, please call the roll. President. Vice Chairman Bernhardt. Present. Council Member Lethwich. Present. Council Member St. John. Present. Council Member Wadowson. Is she on the... Present. Council Member Oscar. Excused. All right. Meeting rules is um, when we open up to the public, please uh, utilize three minutes of the clock to um, present your presentation. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Okay, all right. Um, reading and approval of minutes. Everyone should have received minutes for December 20th and January 17th. Did you receive yep. that? All right, can I get a motion to approve those set of meetings? Minutes. Do we need a date? Um, December 20th and January 17th. That's correct, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. Okay, I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for January the 17th, 2024, and December 20th, 2023. Can I get second. a second? I second. All, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Police Department Chief, can you do your report, please? Good evening, everybody. Um, Mayor, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Citizens of Fairmont Heights. Uh, I wanted to start off with um, updating you on the latest trends here in, in the area in Prince George's County. Um, uh, I have weekly meetings every Thursday um, getting information about the updated trends and uh, uh, crime statistics that are going on, focused on in this area. Um, of course, you guys know uh, all of the horrible things going on with the carjackets, <clears throat> not just in uh, Prince George's County, but in D.C. and this whole uh, DMV area. So we're just asking people to be a little more vigilant. Um, last night, D.C. made an arrest of eight individuals who have probably been responsible for 30 to 40 carjackings. Um, eight handguns were recovered, and they are trying to link some of those to Prince George's County. Um, here in the town, uh, uh, we had 13 vehicle impounds, um, 18 uh, moving violations, and nine uh, parking violations as of today, which is the 21st. So that would be from February 1 to the 21st. Um, town ordinances. Um, it's, it's, it's been a little confusing for people who do not live in the town of Fairmont Heights in reference to whatever the, whatever the rules and re regulations are in reference to parking um, in the town. Um, I advise each person who lives in the town of Fairmont Heights to come to town hall, get a copy of the ordinances so they'll understand um, what the rules and regulations are because it's, we've had uh, meetings, multiple meetings this week and last week with people who are not familiar with what the laws are. And some people are still saying, well, I've been doing this for years. So that doesn't make it right because you've been doing it for years. So if you ride through the town and you just look and see the, the order in which when you go down streets and we've kind of pretty much gotten rid of all of the junk cars, the, the unregistered vehicles, everybody is parking to the flow of traffic. Um, we are uh, stopping a lot of people from coming down the one ways. Not everybody, but, but a, a good amount. And we are um, taking on these stop sign runners. Um, the past few weeks, we've been doing a traffic study here in the town, and I gave the council and the mayor copies of it. Um, from December the 14th to December the 6th, um, we had a, I'm sorry, February the 6th. We had a 37% decrease in violators in the area where we were doing the traffic study because we posted signs. We have a AI camera in that area as well. Um, what we found was the high volume of violations during the day were at 3 p.m. 
3 p.m. being the highest amount of violations on a single day, um, and the lowest being in the morning at 8 a.m. So I know when I became chief, um, a few people um, told me to watch out for the school buses, but we've been in contact with the school bus drivers as well, um, and we are planning on moving this um, traffic safety on this side of um, the town. I'm not gonna name the street. You'll see it when you ride by, so please stop. Um, but 37% is a great number. I like to get the number to at least 50%. Um, some of the video footage I'm not able to show in here, but the people who are not stopping, they're not even slowing down. Uh, that's the scary part. Um, they're just blowing right through them. They can see the sign that we have posted on the ground, if you guys have been over on 59th and Veterans Memorial, and the regular stop <coughs> sign. And then when you pull through it, the sign flashes asking you, did you stop? Those people still just keep going. So um, we have other uh, things that we're going to be putting in place. Um, one of my officers is here, one of my main traffic officers, Officer Mark Hoghill, is doing an outstanding job uh, with ticketing and impounding these vehicles who are coming through here. Um, one lady the other day, I believe, had a registration that had expired in 2021 or 2022. Um, and the people were just saying, well, I, I got to do what I got to do. Um, but that doesn't work for me when you hit somebody and you don't have insurance. Now, they're held liable. Their vehicle is in disrepair, and they have to incur all the costs because you had to do what you had to do. So. Coming through the town of Fremont Heights, we are enforcing it. So let your friends, let your family, let your coworkers know if you're coming through um, and you're not right, then we are going to deal with it accordingly. Um, we, are, we have a traffic initiative coming up with 6D and C Pleasant, so you guys can look for that soon. And one last thing before I go, I want to keep this short. Um, we, are, we, are, uh, we have started having um, conversations again with um, speed camera company. So we are in the mix um, with our speed camera program. Uh, we've already spoke with two companies. We have one more to go and then we'll get together and make some decisions about what we're going to do. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. If anybody wants a copy of the traffic safety uh, survey, I have copies. Uh, code enforcement, Mr. Pinkman. Hey, Mr. Pinkman. Uh, <clears throat> okay, good evening to the mayor, council, and the citizens of the town of Fremont Heights. This is my code re enforcement report from January the 17th through February the 21st, 2024. During this period, we have issued one civil citation totaling $1,000. We haven't issued any building permits during this period. We haven't issued or renewed any business licenses during this period. We have uh, issued three rental business license—I mean, rental licenses totaling $300. We've issued one vacant building registration fee totaling $100. Corrective action notices: We have issued five corrective action notices during this period. An additional information, I placed a uh, work order with WSSC number 332-5467 to repair the damaged roadway at Balsam Tree and Sheriff Road. If anybody ever go Balsam Tree and Sheriff Road, you see is they've cut a piece of the pavement there. WSC, WSSC says Michael and Sons that's responsible. Michael and Sons saying it's WSSC. So we, I've, I've, talk, I've talked to the uh, contractor for uh, Michael and Son, and we, they still haven't resolved it. Uh, I also uh, put a repair ticket in for PG County uh, stormwater drain at the intersection of Balsam Tree and Sheriff Road, and that number was 24-408850. And during this period, I've sent out seven notice informing property owners with past due rental licenses that their payments are due, and we have received two payments up until this present time. In total, we have issued 
$1,250 worth of citations, and we've collected for citations, vacant buildings, registration fees, business licenses, and rental licenses, $450. And basically, that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Pinkman. Any question? Mr. Stewart, so we did have a question online regarding um, Chief's report, but do you want, since we've already moved past, do you want to just hold it yeah, off to citizens' Chief participation? Is, um, or yeah, we can hold it until okay. because we move on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, town Manager, Mr. Rooney. Good evening, Good evening, Mayor, Council, and citizens, and citizens who are online. Um, my name is Doris Romi. I have some people in the room I have not met. I'm the town manager. Um, in terms of administration, it's that time of year again, uh, Mayor and Council, to ensure uh, our insurance renewal. Uh, the training and the workshop uh, for FY 2025 is on March uh, 24th from 9 a.m. Uh, it's in La Plata. That's the closest location. Uh, it is important. Um, I've invited Mr. Cradle. Uh, and, and, Chief, I will share information with you. Uh, as you know, there are so many new uh, the, uh, turns and twists as far as insurance, such as artificial intelligence such as uh, drones, um, such as uh, all, all kinds of vehicles, electric vehicles. So there are a lot of things new. So I will be attending. I've asked Mr. Cradle to attend as well. Um, also, I'm working with Ms. Russell to update the website um, so we can get the information that's on the website updated. Uh, Mr. Cradle and the Public Works staff, done a remarkable job. Uh, if you uh, uh, look around Town Hall, they've uh, done a remarkable job in terms of cleaning the building, cleaning the office space, uh, the lower level, um, and they have made it a pleasant place to work for all. Uh, this would have been true for last week. We were prepared for the uh, snow removal. Uh, I want to warn everybody that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, meteorological uh, spring starts March 1st, so the temperature is warming, and so I think uh, moving forward, we are for the most part prepared in the event uh, that we have a freeze over our snow. Uh, the staff uh, attended a defensive driving class on February 15th uh, at Glen Arden, and I want to thank all the staff that attended. Um, an update for the citizens as well as for the council. Uh, please co uh, keep me updated on any outages of lights or lights with a purple glow. Ms. Downing, I want to thank you for the emails that you sent me. Uh, have the lights in your area you been prepared, repaired? Okay, perfect. Uh, do not follow the information that's on the website or that's on Pepco's website. Please contact me. Uh, I have a, a, a partnership uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, Ruffin and Mr. Tiara. I think you've met before. Uh, economic and community development, we are moving right along. Uh, the uh, net zero housing project consists of seven housing units. 
And, and I have to say that construction can get a little messy, a little, a little out of sorts, and uh, I'm going to talk about that a little later. Uh, so the foundation construction for six net, uh, net uh, six net uh, zero housing units located at Sixth Place continue to work, and will continue through February. I want to thank Mr. F uh, uh, Pinkney for our uh, for uh, future history and looking forward that he is taking pictures and uh, uh, filming uh, the construction. I also want to uh, uh, thank. Uh, so, uh, uh, Maryland State Senator Ivy, uh, Glenn Ivy. Uh, I don't know whether you follow the news like I do, but uh, on Channel 4, Glenn Ivy discussed and shown Fairmont Heights Net Zero Housing Project as far as creating, creative jobs for the future. I want to thank him for that. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Barnhart, I want to thank Mr. Barnhart and his wife for that informative meeting that we had on the 20th uh, to talk about uh, Lot 18 and the story and, the, uh, and to talk about the batteries that uh, would be used for this innovative project. Uh, the house, uh, the Net Zero house to be built at 6, uh, 6117, right on the corner, is likely to be built by a different modular company. <coughs> I know I, I received comments. Someone thought that the property was being auctioned off. No, uh, HIP is working with a company called Module, a company working uh, with Prince George's County Blue Line Corridor. Uh, County Council Member uh, Ivy um, is uh, working to come up with a universal uh, design bill for new housing to be built in Prince George's County. And if I did not attach it, I will send that information to you. Um, a report uh, on the Department of Environment. We are working with Carol Barth, manager. Uh, she's the tree conservation, uh, tree conservation and conservation landscape program uh, to plant at least 100 trees. Uh, and we're going to start with planting at the ravine. The plan will be presented to the council for final approval. Tree mapping is almost completed. Uh, a report will be presented to the council at the March meeting. Um, did I send you the email that Mrs. Barth will be here next week? And well, we will do a walking tour with her to look at the species that she's selecting. Um, the green team is seeking um, is seeking a council approval to use a section of uh, 4.4 acres to design and plant a community garden. The Chesapeake Bay Trust wants to and will grant us a $9,500 grant to the town for the community garden. When I have the details, I'll probably present it at March as to the size uh, and, and the rules and regulations for uh, the community garden. I'm excited about that. Uh, as far as historic preservation and, and historic houses, the Samuel Hargrove House at 5907 K Street is a historic resource built circa 1918, and it was sold on January 5th for $240,000. Um, also, uh, Mr. Tom, uh, Tom um, um, Hobbs Al Planter is also tracking the sale of historic properties uh, in the town. The Samuel Hargrove House, I'm sorry, the Tolls Brooks House at 708 59th Avenue is also a historic resource circa 1910. It was sold on December 1st for 225000 The house is under renovation and certainly made a lot of improvements to, the, to uh, um, that particular street. Um, I would certainly thank the mayor, the council, uh, Ms. Walker, in our preparation for Black History Month. If you have not had an opportunity, take a look at our cabinet, uh, our, our uh, display cabinets. We have one here at the, in the outer lobby, and there are two in the inner lobby. Um, I want to thank the Edward Morris family who donated many of the artifacts and documents. Some of our documents are so sensitive because they're over 100 years old. So I'm going to be working with the Smithsonian as to how to preserve them. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that kind of information that we have connected, uh, collected. Uh, I'm sorry, I said uh, Thomas Gross is actually our planner. Uh, and he's provided plant, uh, printing material. Uh, and I think I left each council member, I left you. 
copy uh, of the uh, Fairmont Heights um, um, historic uh, uh, brochure. And also, during Black History Month, please take advantage of walking to a Fairmont Heights, the early 20th century African American community. And we are fortunate to be on the register for historic places, the national register and the county register. Um, I'm excited. Um, uh, we are planning uh, uh, the uh, Black History Month celebration with a brown bag luncheon uh, to be held on February 29th, 2024, uh, and the flyers on the back table. Uh, I have in invited Maryland National Capital Park and Planning um, to uh, give us an overview of the historic significance of Fairmont Heights. Uh, which would be followed by a presentation by Edward Morris. Uh, the Morris family is descendants of the original settlers of Fairmont Heights. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Mayor consented today that she may be here. And I'm hoping that you'd be here to welcome all of our guests. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Um, so, so we're going to provide uh, sandwiches and beverages. And uh, we're going to have guest speakers. And of course, you can tour and take a look at our, uh, our display. Uh, this is an important notice to the mayor and council and to the citizens. Uh, the, uh, the year 2025, I mean, that sounds like a long way off, but it's not. The town will be celebrating its 90th anniversary. So we need to start now forming committees to plan for the 90th anniversary. This is a remarkable milestone. Please move forward now with celebrating a plan. Uh, uh, this is my message to the council. Please move forward now with creating a planning committee for the event. I recommend the committee include elected officials, citizens, staff, and other partners. Um, Mrs. Leftwich, I know we talked yesterday, but I'm asking, could we change our date for our economic and community development meeting? We were supposed to have it tomorrow. I have not had enough time to uh, plan and, and prepare the agenda. Yeah, because um, I'll mention it in my report, but we're going to do something a little different. A little different. Okay, that's great, fine. great. So, yes, that's fine. Okay. Uh, the other thing, uh, the, uh, the Earth Day uh, 2024 is celebrated every year on, uh, on the, um, the first, I'm sorry, fourth Monday in April. Uh, so you'll hear more about that. Uh, and also, very important, on yesterday, I had a meeting with Ethan Sweep from Congressman Ivey's office, and we discussed funding and grant money that may be available. We talked mainly about safe streets for all uh, um, and the plans. Uh, and some of you may have seen in the news where uh, Riverdale Park, Edmonston, Brentwood have all received grants, I think, uh, uh, averaging about $10,000. But the first thing I've talked to the chief already that we must do, we must do a, um, uh, put together a plan, an action plan, as to how we are going to develop a safe street. And the chief and I will be working on that uh, this week coming up. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Rumi? Go ahead. A date for bulk trash? We have not. No. Not yet. Not yet. We'll, we'll work on it. Mm -hmm. I'll make a note of that. I'll make a note of that. Actually. Thank you, Ms. Rumi. You're Rome. welcome. We will now have the treasurer's report from Ms. Susan Walker. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens, and staff. Good evening. Um, I'll be reporting as of the end of April. Wow. Start again. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'll be reporting as of the end of January. Um, at the work session, I gave you a report. And because we have not had an opportunity to review that report, um, I'm not going to present all of the information in that report. But basically, what I shared was a comparison through um, the beginning of the fiscal year, July through the end of January, and I compared it to where we were last year at this same time. The reason for using this report is because we are in our budget season. So as we prepare to set the budget for 2025, we need to see where we are now compared to where we were last year, and then also anything that we have to take care of for this year. 
So for example, if you were to look at the income, the total income as of the end of June that we have reported is $592,216 compared to last year's total income of $763,275. So that's a large variant. So that's something that sticks out that makes me say, you know, where are, what's the reason for the variance? Part of it is that there are deposits that Ms. Russell and I are still um, reconciling that need to be um, updated in our system. And so this is the time of year where just again, trying to make sure that everything that we have is in, which we put everything in, but then seeing, you know, if we have any big fluctuations, what could be causing those fluctuations. Um, when I was looking at the expenses, I see the differences. I see differences in, um, for instance, the police department, what we spent on salaries. But last year, at the same time, we didn't have a full department. But that's information that the council, you will need to know as we begin to set the budget, because certainly, we can't, we can't do it based upon 2023 because we weren't at full staff. But then also setting for 2025, we have to be able to, to maintain the staff that we have. And so as everyone, most, I'm, I'm sorry, most people know we do have ARPA funds, but those ARPA funds have been designated. And so one of the things we, we, everyone was cautioned on with using ARPA funds is you don't want to use the funds and then not be able to maintain the staff later. So. Um, I'll say to the mayor and council, we are in budget season, and so we are really, we're going to get it's going to get rolling here. Um, there will be several meetings. Um, the citizens, you are welcome to come to those meetings and be a part of those meetings and hear what's happening because, you know, we're we're here to make decisions that are on behalf of the community. So we will be moving forward. A couple things that um, behind the scenes working on to be prepared for that meeting. Uh, our fees. I, I've brought up several times that. <clears throat> in order to make sure that our processes are working smoothly. One of the things that Mr. Pinkney and I have talked about for several years, we've been talking about this, is that um, the structure, the fee structure that we have, we need to make sure that it's the same across the board. So for example, um, business licenses, those renew every year, the first of the, first of the fiscal year. But that's not the same thing for rental, for rental licenses. It's not the same thing um, for vacant properties and vacant dwellings. So Mr. Pinkney and I will be coming forth with a recommendation so that everyone's licenses will renew the first of the year. That will, that will streamline the accounting. It will make it easier. So we, you'll be able to plan. You sh you'll know, you know how many rental licenses do we currently have, how many um, vacant properties, how many vacant dwellings, how many business licenses, you can then plan your budget based upon that versus having a rolling where some person's license renews in January, someone's license renews in August. You really can't plan based upon that. But that will have to come before um, the mayor and council, and you have to put it before the citizens as well because they have a, a say in when you, when you make those changes. Um, but because this is the budget season, we, we, will, bring, we will be bringing that forth. Um, as you know, we have been awarded a bond. We are ready to move forward with our basement renovations, but we do have one document that we have to get submitted. Once we get that, that document submitted, we're able to then move forward and start with those renovations. Um, have asked the front door, the front door vendors to just pause for a minute because I don't want to have anyone to come in and we're not ready when, when they are ready. Um, I did receive, I shouldn't say I received because that's not true. <laughs> I have heard some concerns about, and I've heard them over the years, about the grants that the town has received. Um, and I've been blessed to be here in January for 16 years. So it's been a long journey. And what I did, what I have put together, and I'm still finalizing everything, is I'm trying to put all the grants in one location so that anyone that wants to come and take a look at the documents, you can come and take a look at the documents. We have received several grants, and I went through to make sure that we didn't have any grants that came into the town and those funds were not spent the way they needed to be spent. Um, I'm going to discourage people from asking for submitting FOIA requests because you're going to end up with having to pay because it's a lot of, it's a lot of documentation. Um, I think the CARES grants is over 300 pages worth of documentation, but I, it's open for everyone to see. So, Mayor and Council, I'm going to I'm going to need some some location, and pr pr preferably um, a fireproof file cabinet so that we have the documents. But then also, 
Um, Ms. Russell has an amazing scanner that we are going to utilize to scan the documents, make them electronic, and then hopefully be able to upload them so you can easily access them on the website. Because I do hear the concerns, and I want to make sure that we are addressing the concerns. Um, and so tonight isn't the night to go through everything, but I will just highlight the grants that, um, that, that have come in. So we had the pocket park, the historic markers. I'm sorry, the pocket park was $140,000. Historic marker, $75,000, $100,000 bond in 2018. The MEA grant was $23,000. PEPCO grant in 2010 was $9,000. We now have a PEPCO grant for $20,000. The radio grant, which was $22,000, that was the sole source grant. We had, we had nothing to do with the vendor Motorola that was chosen. We had to use that vendor, but just the documentation to show that we used those funds where we were supposed to use those funds. Um, the art grant, $5,000. The Morehouse grant, um, I think that was $10,000 in 2018. Um, the World War II monument, I forgot to write that amount down. The census grant, $7,670. 7, the CARES grant, ARPA, and then I said the bond, the bond we have now. All of those grants, that money that has come in to show that documentation. So that if anybody has questions, I just asked Mr. Rumi if we could look at another MEA grant because we're looking at, we're having vendors come in to do the lights, to give us quotes for the lights around the outside of the building, but it would be great if we can find some funding for that. The uh, lights that we did in the building, we used the grant to do those, to make these changes. And so if we could do the same thing for the outside, but I hear, I hear the concerns. I want to be able to share to, for, you, for you to be able to see that we are being good stewards of the money that we have coming in and be able to show that documentation so that anyone that has questions, it'll be there. So, Mayor and Council, as we begin to move forward into budget season, again, ma making these, um, not necessarily corrections, but I'm going to call them corrections, making these corrections changes so that things are readily available um, and people, if they have questions, they can come and see the documentation. I will remind you that MML is coming up. Please check your schedules, check the MML website to see what the dates are to determine if you're going. Um, registration will be a little different this year. Um, I hate to keep saying um. It's going to be different this year, which means as council members, you will be responsible for making sure that you have made your reservations, your hotel reservations we will not be making those hotel reservations. So you will need to make those hotel reservations. We can talk about that in, in more detail. However, the, the registration, we will still take care of the registration. We do have to also confirm the location for the digital sign. Um, our former council member, Ms. Brianna White, had, has done the, had done the legwork for us to, um, excuse me, to look at uh, options for digital signs. And we had done, you know, beginning the part, which was to say where the sign would be located. But where the original location was proposed, that piece of property we don't own. And so we need to move the sign to a piece of property that the town does own so that we don't end up with any problems later on. So we need to confirm where we want to move it to, that we actually own that piece of land, and then PEPCO has to come back out because we gave them two locations, and they can't do anything right now until they know for sure that we own those locations. And the last thing I want to uh, put before you, well, two things, actually. Um, it's, spring is coming. We would spent all this money to clean the alleys. And we're going to have to go back because things are growing over. We have to make some decisions about the alleys. We have to decide, are we going to use millet or some other, some other means to keep those alleys clear? I understand the safety concerns. And certainly, I do not want to be the reason that anyone feels unsafe in their residence um, for anything that any kind of activities happening around their residence. So this is something that we need to talk about, get the input from the mayor and council, input from citizens, and see how do we move forward. But certainly, because we used our highway user funds to clean those alleys, we have to be good stewards of that. Um, and the last thing, we are in the final phase of switching our accounts over. So we are moving our accounts. And um, our bank accounts, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, for the, not for being clear, the bank accounts. Final phase of moving our bank accounts over. So we do, I do want to meet with you just to go over that information so that you will know, you know, we have this account, we're moving it to this bank. It's going to be this amount of money moving from here to there. And then just knowing that for a period of time, we're going to have, we'll be working with two banks because we have to leave the accounts open until everything clears. 
the, especially the two accounts that we use the most, which would be our operating account and our payroll account. We're going to have to leave those open. Uh, and just, in, just until that um, 180 days that a check is good for. But at some point in time, we're going to stop writing checks. And then from that point forward, um, the checks are the issue. We'd have 180 days for them to clear. So we will have some, we will have some dual accounts for a period of time. But uh, at some point in time, we will just be with one bank. And, when we, and we, we will also have um, a, a debit card assigned to um, the signers with, with the new bank. So that is something that within the next probably week and a half, two weeks, um, we, we need to finish that process. But I will tell you on a personal note, my daughter is getting married next Saturday. Oh. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Um, so I am a proud mother, and I do plan to take next week for myself. But you know that means you, I'm always available. So you can still call me Ms. Von Hart. <laughs> you can still call me, but um, I am going to take some time to try to help, not to try to, to get things done. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm a proud mama. <laughs> yes, indeed. The one, the one that y'all met. Oh, yes. The one that y'all met. Are there any questions for Susan? The one that will be $100,000, right? Yes. Yes, $100,000, yes. yes. I got two. Can um, you present the question from yep. earlier? Chief, this question is for you. OK, we'll start off. And then I have two for Susan, too. Do you want to do, do Susan Susan's while she's here? And then okay. Mr. Barnhart, you had a question for Susan? OK, finish Susan, and then we'll go back to the chief. OK, um, did the town receive a more recent PEPCO grant in 2021 or 2022 for approximately 10 k Yes, I thought, I thought I said that in my, um, but if I didn't, in the listing, yes, we have a $10,000 grant that we received in 2020 and a $5,000 grant, the art grant. I thought I said both of those, but I'm sorry if I didn't. Okay, and then has the, uh, no, but um, has the budget meeting dates already been determined? If yes, when will the dates be made public? No, we have not set the dates. All right, and then Mr. Barnhart had a question. Mm -hmm. I have it. I have it for you. Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. All so right. can we go back to the question for the chief? Yep. All right. So besides traffic and parking enforcement, can the chief please speak on what other duties the town police officers are handling in the town? Or does the county police handle everything outside of the parking and traffic in town? No, we handle day-to-day -day calls for service. Um, between the hours of 9, 9 a.m. is when I get here until the last officer leaves for the day. Um, so if any 911 call comes out um, while we, we are uh, in service on the street, we handle the day-to-day -day calls. Um, sometimes there, there are times where we may assist um, D.C. <coughs> on Eastern Avenue. Um, and there are times when we may assist county police on Sheriff Road or just across Sheriff Road just to help um, traffic control or, or whatever the case may be, if it's a fluid investigation. Um, so day-to-day -day calls, we, we do run the calls for service. Right. I'm not sure. And can I say one last thing? Um, I didn't report, um, uh, and if the citizens may have known, um, on January 30th, um, uh, Prince George's County Health Department shut down the Ebony Inn um, for health code violations. So no, it's, it's, they just opened back up. So, so with that being said, um, I, am, I have a meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. where I'm going to gather more information in reference to exactly what all the violations were and what are the follow-ups from the county as well. Um, you guys have living here and working here a lot longer than me. You guys know more of the history than I do. But um, we want everybody to be on the up and up and following whatever the code is, um, whatever the laws are, uh, if they're going to operate within the town of Fairmont Heights and Prince George's County. It doesn't make a difference. Everybody should be squared away. But um, in order for them to be shut down, there had to be some serious violations. So I just wanted to add that. And tomorrow afternoon, um, 
myself, the mayor, and I believe the council as well, uh, will be attending the uh, municipal retreat um, hosted by the state's attorney's office where all council mayors, chiefs, um, the county exec, uh, I believe the governor is going to be there tomorrow. It's a breakout session um, to talk about the crime, uh, infrastructure, um, the plan, the future of the county, and all of us will be there for about three hours, I guess, three or four hours, something like that. Um, so, Thank you. but that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to move down. We're, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pinkney. Uh huh. Yeah. Mr. Pinkney has another engagement. All right. So we're going to move down the agenda to old business. So Fox is in the town. Councilwoman Saint. Uh, I'm sorry. Councilwoman Wood Dawson. Is somebody going to cut this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had uh, reported on it a little while ago. Uh, within 59th all the way down to L Street, uh, you can see them. The neighbors are complaining as well. It's got to be like a dinner boxes or a pack because they're traveling like two to three together all the way down in the monument. Mm -hmm. okay. So if there's a way... Um, the animal control said the town is liable for that themselves, so the traps will have to be set by the council. But um, kids were running from the foxes early uh, in the middle of last week. Their parents came back down in the street to see what was chasing them and the dog and those that were out there could kind of identify. So something needs to be done. Maybe code enforcer can follow it through. Okay, I'll have, um, I'll have public works look into no, that. I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. Yeah, code enforcer and public works, that's, that's not a job for you one of them. I'll make the contact with um, public, I mean, with pet animal control. Yeah, because okay. yeah, they. Somebody out because they can even come drop off traps or whatever the case may be. No, they're not going to do it. That's right. They're not doing it. They allowable, right. Okay. All right. Um, let's look into seeing, um, maybe reaching out to uh, animal, who are those people again? I'm sorry. Animal control. Is, I'm telling you. Animal control and see, does anybody know how to set a trap? They said that the town public work department can hire or an exterminator? Is that who does that? No. Who no. The traps? And but there's that, okay, we'll look into it and get back to you. They're also on K Street in the woods. And then they go behind the townhouses, going to Sheriff Road, and I saw him go behind the house. They, 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 okay. they cross Sheriff Road back and forth all, yeah. all the time. So they're not just in the town. They're crossing over, going over to James Farmer. What's that, James Farmer um, Road? Oh, yeah. Right. They're, they're, on, they're on Eastern Avenue. <laughs> they're all up and down 59th Avenue. The landed house with the big gates. They're going back and forth. Okay, so we'll we'll look into how we're gonna mitigate that issue, um, and we'll get back to the citizens. Thank you. Um, town hall rental, Ms. Wood Dawson. Yes, I'd like to know if, with the rental of the building, is there some form of rental procedures, or were the uh, forms and all changed, or are they the same? Whatever is given to the individual, I'd like to see a copy. Okay, we'll put a copy. Um, we'll email you a copy. That'll work. Okay. Was that was that all for the town rental? You have the agenda, right? Yeah. That's all for the rental. That's all I need the information. Okay. And that will clarify what I, you know, that'll. Um, okay. I'll that's have what I'm asking. Email it to you tomorrow. Could you hear me? I'll have Miss Russell email it to you tomorrow. Okay, it's one more thing on the. Are we going by the agenda or? Yes, yes Miss. I, I was waiting for you to call out the next thing so it wouldn't be a break. Okay. Before um, I, that way I could ask my question. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the 2024 calendar, and that's Council right. Dawson. 
Yes, generally at the end of December, a calendar for the following year has already been formatted and uh, written. Do we have a calendar? We do That's not. That's what I... We do not. And um, I don't know if we're going to continue that. We're going to look into it as a council to determine what works best for this council. But um, I'll, we'll, I'll get back to you. Oh, okay, because that's what gives clarity to days off in the community. That's been going on since there's been a town of Fairmont Heights. I'm now you're saying a, a calendar might not be conducive saying, for I'm, now? Okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Are you saying a calendar that, like, gives dates of events, or are you saying a calendar that, that like, what my calendar is, what... Councilwoman Barnhart's calendar is? No, it's not like just a printed calendar. It's like a government calendar or like the was, school you, system you, has a... She it tells the, the holidays? holidays. Oh, we do have it that. Yeah. We do have that. That's what, that's what I'm asking. Could I get a copy of the calendar from 2023 to December 2024? That's what I was asking. I think we had that. Okay, um, Ms. Russell has already done that, and um, she will put it in your mailbox. Okay, as well with the retreat that the chief is mentioning, was this ever forwarded it to was, the council? It was sent to everybody. Oh, okay, because I need to know what you all are using to get into my everybody, because I don't get anything. Not at all. I'm not on an email string or anything, and this is repetitive. So this is why, not saying it to be confrontational, but not understanding how for so many years I got the mail, and now all of a sudden, you know, I'm hard to find. Well, Ms. Dawson, I will personally say you're not being excluded from any email that I send out to the staff and the council. So, um, okay, well, what, what I would sure like what to see... I'm not sure list you're on receiving stuff from the county or from the state or from the federal. Oh, I get that. But however, I get that. you're not being excluded from any emails that I send out to the council and the state. I think I saw it. That, that last email, that came from... What I'm asking is with the retreat that's tomorrow is where and at what time? It's um, at the Laurel Library and it starts at 11 a.m. I don't um, recall the address off the top of my head, but it's Laurel Branch Library. Laurel Branch Library at 11 it's off, route, off of Route 1. I'm not sure of the location. I would have to use my navigation to get there, but it's in Laurel. Who sent out the email? I will say I don't think I have it. I don't have it. I don't know. Uh, Sean, Sean, Sean Wilson. Wilson. I the, 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 the municipality uh, liaison and the state's attorney's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say something later, but I, um, but it came out before because it was scheduled two weeks ago. Correct. And it got, it got, and it got canceled, canceled because of the polar um, plunge. So it was rescheduled till tomorrow. Yeah, it might just be going up the up well, I was, That's why I was asking, was anything forwarded out? Yes. All right. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Russell, you typically get it and send it to everybody, right? Okay, just continue to do that. I'll double check and make sure everybody is receiving all the notifications about events from the, the state, the county, and the federal level. I'll stay on top of that. Did you have anything else, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Wood Johnson? No, thank you. Okay, so that concludes old business. Now we're gonna move on to new business, hey. So the first thing on the agenda is the swearing in of our new council member, Ms. Sherry Downing, and then the swearing in of our ethics board member. Unfortunately, two of our members um, weren't able for the ethics board weren't, weren't able to be here tonight, so we're going to swear them in next month. But um, so I'm going to do Ms. Downing first, and then um, you. Okay, sir. All right. Let's see if I got the right one. That's you.
Okay, so um, next agenda item is the state of the town, which I will be presenting. And I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. I have the privilege of delivering the 2024 State of the Town Falmer Heights Address. First and foremost, I'm happy and proud to report that the state of our town continues to be exceptionally strong. The town of Falmer Heights has never been, been better positioned for sustainable long-term success. I'm proud of the significant accomplishments this council has made thus far. These accomplishments include major investments in public safety, public works, addressing storm water runoff, historic preservations, pedestrian and traffic safety, um, progress on the net zero housing project, and laying the groundwork for an exciting future for our town that will ensure a vibrant, safe, and affordable community for future generations. Code enforcement. The town is collecting approximately $9,000 from building permits and $6,500 from various civil citations. We purchased a new vehicle for code enforcement. He left already. <laughs> Much needed. Public safety. We purchased two new vehicles and in the process of purchasing one more, completed phase one of the traffic control study. Um, we installed speed humps in several locations throughout the town. Phase two is currently underway. The police department is using this technology to determine the next areas for our speed hump installation. Public works, we purchased uh, a new truck, a leaf vac, a salt spreader, and a street sweeper. Is that correct? Okay. Um, and all of those useful equipment, that useful equipment is coming in handy for the town. Economic development, there were six new houses built in the town generating approximately $33,000 in tax revenue. Now, while we haven't had much in um, commercial economic development, we, we do have residential economic development. We're in a, uh, Susan already said we're in the final stages of switching our financial institution. Um, this will allow us to monitor our funds through online banking and other um, bank features that they would offer us at this new bank that we weren't getting at the previous bank or we would have had to pay higher fees for it. Um, we've upgraded the town's website. We've made street and sidewalk repairs throughout the town. Um, and we're in the process of identifying other areas that need repairs. Um, painted no parking zones, stop lines, fire hydrant zones, and handicap accessible curbs throughout the town. Purchased and installed blinking traffic enforcement signs. Uh, we've clean, we're cleaning out the town hall, removing all the old and unused items, archiving important town documents in the cloud. We're in the final stage of the procurement process for the bathroom repairs. We started the Market Circle um, Enhancement Project funded by PEPCO. And I wanna say none of this progress would be possible without the dedication, enduring commitment, and resilience, resiliency of all those who make our work possible. Our town employees, thank you. Our resident volunteers, thank you, and our community um, in our business community. I would like to recognize all of you and express my gratitude for our partnership and shared vision. Before I move on to the specific goals for 2024, I'd like to officially welcome Ms. Downing, our new council member, and reiterate that we are committed to working together in the best interest of the town of Fema Heights. We will continue to provide multiple opportunities for ongoing input on the issues that residents seem to care about the most, namely economic development, blight, and public safety. This year's goals will focus on dealing with blight, economic development, public safety, creating ordinances and resolutions, updating the town charter, and other outdated documents. And I want to add, we're going to work on the town home project as well. The, um, we also will seek uh, county, state, and federal funding to support um, some of our town functions and operations. We're also looking to budget um, this coming uh, budget cycle for a lobbyist and a land use attorney. All of these things will help us move the town forward. Citizen participation. As you know, we have low citizen participation. We plan to host several public engaging events such as 
Thank you, Susie. Pizza and Paint, Movie Night, Community Yard Sales. Um, and we're also going to look into doing giveaways. I know that sounds crazy, but giveaways may could get more people in the door. Um, and as I close this state of the town, I want to personally thank everyone who supported this council. We're a fairly new council, but I guess the, the sentiments speak for all of us that we're going to leave it better than we found it. Yes. Um, and again, I would like to thank my dedicated staff and council for all of their support and the direction we're headed in. Thank you very much, Mayor Stewart. So we're going to go down the, does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Um, the next agenda item is a black history presentation from the Citizens Association. I'm going to pass it to the citizens as we're waiting and I'll do my entire day to talk. I'm sorry, we have. The citizen participation. No, we had, you asked if you're on the agenda. So um, you have citizen participation. No, no, you're on the agenda under new business. You asked to be placed on the agenda. So you don't want them to go first? No, they're, they're... We still got more stuff. Yeah, we got more stuff to do. And you get longer than three minutes this time. Five. Thank you. Five. No, I'm kidding. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Okay. Take your time. Uh -huh. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Martez Vaughn, our president of the Citizen Association. Mar Heights, um, Black History Moment, and just bear with me for a second. So, as we all know that, you know, a lot of black history is untold. Uh, we got a lot of people that done a lot of things from the black culture that has not been recognized. Um, and we use things every day that people have invented or created that was just untold. No, you know, patents, recognition, or rewards, or anything about that, right? So what I appreciate about Black History Month is we got these kids that's doing things about research about Black History Month. We got social media. We got all types of people that's just uncovering truth about black history that we never even known about. We always talk about Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall, Rosa Parks, you know, all the, all the big wigs, right? But we don't talk about the, the other people that's just untold. So we always use this analogy sometimes when things happen in our lives about when well, one door open. I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. When one door closes, another one opens, right? And we use doors every day, every day. Not knowing who made that door, what manufacturer made the door, not, uh, anything. But we use it every day, like we do with our cars. So we know Ford make a car, Toyota make a car, Honda make a car, we know all that, right? So this Black History uh, moment right here is something I just came across. And I was like, wow, I never even knew this. And maybe somebody here do know it or don't know it, but I'm sharing it today, so you will know it. So we have a young man here. Uh, his name was uh, Osborne Dorsey. I don't know if anybody heard of Osborne Dorsey. OK, Osborne Dorsey was the first uh, black African American to patent for the doorknob. An interior door latching mechanism was given in 1878. Um, he was the first African American inventor who uh, invented the doorknob and the uh, mechanism to close and open the door. So when I seen this, I said, wow. I said, we always use that analogy about when well, one door closed, another one opens, but not realizing that who the person or people behind it that made that happen. So I wanted to share that moment as a Black History moment. Thank you. That's very nice. Awesome. Thank you very much. His name was Osborne Dorsey. Osborne Dorsey. Oh, Dorsey Door. Oh, Dorsey Door. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't make that relation. Okay. 
So, Mr. Rumi, you put on the agenda the brat, the bag, the brown bag lunch. Uh, yeah, um, but you already and, discussed and, and, it. Um, I think I already sufficiently covered it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and um, also, we sent out uh, some invites and notices, and so far we've been receiving ten responses. Oh, great. Okay. So, Mayor, Council, and staff, if you want to know some real unknown history facts, please come to our brown bag lunch. Thank you, Ms. Room. Um, so the next agenda item is rank choice voting. Councilwoman St. John. Good evening, everyone. Um, so just want to touch on this really quickly. Um, since we didn't uh, go through this last week, um, I was presented from um, Mr. P.J. Benson, which is um, a representative from the Merlin Forward Party. Um, not very much an expert in this area at all, so just wanted to present um, before the mayor and council um, you guys' thoughts or feelings uh, on the Merlin Forward Party coming in to do a presentation. Um, so this presentation would be on ranked choice voting um, as well as um, other things in that area as far as special elections, um, RCV ballots, and what they would basically do um, is come give a short presentation. Um, I did ask him about 20 minutes. Initially, it's 30 minutes, so more so a reason why I wanted to bring this forward first to see if we wanted to allot um, that kind of time for this type of presentation, if it's really needed. Um, just kind of looking at the past elections, usually if it's only um, two candidates running for mayor or there's only the number amount of people running for the council, it may not come into play, but what about a... a, a uh, instance where we have four people running for mayor or we have six people uh, running for council when no one's up for a seat yet. Um, so ranked choice voting is something that basically kind of looks at the odds um, and determines how a vote should be made. Um, and then they specialize, like I said, in special elections as well where they just kind of come in. Um, they also help with the charter and making these uh, rules if we are elected to choose some of these style votings. Um, and as of right now, they are currently in 60 uh, jurisdictions across 24 states. So just wanted to know if we were interested in possibly hearing that, if we feel like it isn't something that we'd be looking at right now before wasting um, the citizens' time, the council's time of putting them on a presentation. Okay. Can so. we, Ms. Russell, can we do a poll to see um, and just have the council vote on it? Okay. And then we can determine if we want to. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, that's, okay. I have no begging either way. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so the next item on the agenda is reports. I will not have a report, Vice Chair. I don't have a report. Okay, uh, St. John, Councilwoman St. John. Um, so very, very quickly, uh, I did in attendance with Mayor Stewart attend um, last month's uh, PGCA meeting. Um, I am still currently actively working on the newsletter. I was down for about two weeks being ill, um, but this week, next week, I'll start to make connections uh, with the Public Works team, uh, Ms. Arumi, the town treasurer, so that we can start collecting information, um, as well as send out communication to the residents um, to see if there's any input um, as far as we kind of talked about before, um, doing sort of like an ad or um, putting a spotlight on a resident. So I'll be putting the fill out for that. So I I can also get some information for that, but our first quarterly newsletter um, is currently in the works and should be coming out, and that is the end of my report. Thank you. Um, I do have something for you. Okay. It's a template newsletter uh -huh. that I received from another community. Okay. And I would love to look at it. Okay. okay. Uh, Councilwoman Leftwich. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just going to be brief. Um, I wanted to first apologize for... Uh, me not attending the work session um, <clears throat> last week. I am getting over something myself. I tested negative for COVID. However, this cold is still lingering. So um, with that, I just wanted to just publicly apologize for me not being in attendance. Um, and also, uh, me being kind of out of commission, I originally had a meeting scheduled uh, with Christine McPherson regarding the Main Street Maryland program. Uh, with it's, it's a uh, department of uh, DHCD. 
Um, and that was actually on Thursday, February 8th, um, but I could not make it, but uh, we will reschedule for early March. Um, this, this funding actually will help us with our economic development and um, which segues into, uh, I would like to plan a economic development forum uh, next month, actually with refreshments and an interactive agenda to get feedback <coughs> from the citizens. I wanna keep actually reaching out and reiterating the fact that um, I do need input. Um, our first project and the things that we do, uh, the state of Maryland actually has money available to do some of the things that we do, especially with like the Main Street program. Mm -hmm. However, we need to identify what we want to do first. Um, we did have an economic development meeting on January 18th, <clears throat> excuse me, at 7 p.m. Um, and the Citizens Association was there and I'm glad that they came out because we were able to just kind of brainstorm. And one of the uh, suggestions that came out of that meeting was potentially a new town hall. That would be our first um, project possibly. However, again, I do want the forum to be interactive so I can get additional feedback because when I meet with Christine, I need to give her some sort of layout as to what we're going to do and um, what our first projects will be. Will it be um, business related? Will it be, will it be us getting a new town hall? What exactly do we want to do as a town? Um, and I do need feedback, but I will um, well in advance give notice so everyone can be there. I encourage everyone to be there. Um, and, um, and we can definitely move forward. But I just wanted to mention those, <clears throat> those few things. Um, and that's the end of my report for now. Don't forget about the CDC meeting we had. The community? Remember you uh, met with CDC? Oh, yes. Um, that meeting, um, we had a community development uh, meeting, actually. Uh, the mayor and I, we met with uh, the CDC. And um, out of that meeting, we were just able to get an understanding as to what they can do for us, the possible grants that we could go after. And also, they expressed an interest in that economic development meeting as well. So um, I did. Thank you for mentioning that, Madam Mayor. Um, and that um, concludes my report. And it will actually be a part of the forum as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman <coughs> Downey. Did have a question. Um, who won the Christmas decoration? I'm still working on that too. I'm working with Susan with that one. Sound good. I do oh, have I two because oh. Miss Russell helped me with it as well. So I do right. have two. So we get back to Susan with the gift cards. Can so we finalize that? Yeah, please. We we in February. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's a question on right. how much the gift card second. amount is right. for. Oh, I'm so sorry. It, sorry, there was a question. Um, oh. First prize is 100. The second prize is 50. We in decision of Visa or Home Depot in that stage right now. Mm, okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Wait, question was was that the? Did you conclude your report, Ms. Downey? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm Councilwoman Downey. All right. So now we're going to open it up to citizens' participation. Um, you have to come up here and speak. And remember, you have three minutes. So. Uh -huh, please. Okay. Um, state your name and your address. My name is Lawrence Swan. I live at 1014 59th Avenue, Course Farm Heights, Maryland. All right. I grew up with half the people on this council. I know your mothers, I know your fathers. We had our mother's re uh, memorial here a few weeks back. We signed the contract, we did everything we were supposed to do. Get here, nothing was prepared. It wasn't clean, we had to clean. I had to bring my own tables, because a few of the tables were broken. And for me to be told from one of your council members that's not right on this board right here, we should have just not accepted it. Put yourself in my shoes, or my sister's shoes for someone to tell us that, basically, right an hour before, to tell the people that's showing up, don't accept it. We shouldn't have accepted it. If her attitude was rude, you know what I mean? And I don't know, and we haven't even received our money back yet. We keep calling, 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 they're getting no response. Actually, no response. Actually, the email went out 
was it today or yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday yeah. to reimburse and, you fully and we for been, the rental. And no one called us. Um, no one said anything. The decision was just made, and the email went out to myself and the treasurer so that she could cut the check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we and, called and yesterday, and it was, what day was it? Um, it was no, what day? What day did it happen? Yeah, and that was the woman who told us we should have should not accepted it. She was rude on the phone. Kirsten, I know your mother and your father. I know your mother and father. I know your mom. I still talk to your mom when I see her. So, just imagine someone telling you this. So and I, I know wanna, part of your family. Okay, I, I know we. we so it's it's the, so I just it's the attitude it's the attitude you get when you talk to someone here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She was rude. She cut she kept cutting us off. Do you? Can you tell me the person? What's what is she? Yeah, this lady right here. It's the manager. The manager. Okay, uh, we'll we'll address that part. Yeah, it's, you know you know what I'm saying? It's it's it, it just was rude. You know, and the lady who we supposed to be talking to, we haven't heard from her yet. Who, who was that? Who? Oh, Miss Russell. Because Miss Russell was told to stand down until the decision was made. And the decision was made yesterday, and the email from Vice Chair came to myself and Susan that we're going to go ahead and reimburse it. So Susan would have gotten it today or yesterday, and she'll be cutting the check momentarily, mm -hmm. and then we were going to reach out to you. But I do want to personally apologize for the state or the condition of the downstairs. Thank you. Um, and, and I knew your mother. I know your family as well. Mm -hmm. So it kind of hurts to hear that you had to go through yeah. that. And we so, try to, we want to keep our money in the town. We understand. We want to, just the same way we want to spend our money with mm -hmm. our own kind. Mm -hmm. But when we do do it, they, yeah. Either it's a rude at, rudeness, attitude, like they don't want you to spend no money here. We could have easily took our money to the town and Chevrolet and used their little building. But we decided to come here. So we will fully reimburse you for the rental. Mm -hmm. And um, and we hope, and, and we'll give you a free rental. Mm -hmm. I, I know that doesn't smooth things over quite yet, but we'll give you a free rental. For the facility, as long as nobody's using it, we can you, you can utilize it okay. after the bathroom renovations are done, of course. Okay. But right. again, Mr. Swan, I'm very sorry for what you had to go through. Thank you. Yeah, you I'd just like to apologize as well. Sorry yes. about this. I would like to apologize. Thank That's you. unacceptable. Thank you. It is. And, and we'll fix that problem. Thank you. We are in the process of updating the rental agreement and making some changes. So hopefully it'll be a, a better process. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Barnard. I said that's the mentality. It's not. Well, I'm gonna be honest. With you, it's been going on since those two was made. The, the last two, and with Pat. You know what I'm saying? It, that's how long it's been. We're going trying on. to change the culture. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we're changing the culture. Yeah, we so are. Exactly. We're trying, and we'll we'll fix we that will problem. We will change that. Are there any other citizens that would like to come up and say anything? Miss Joyce. Oh, you have to come up here. Okay. I know who you are, Miss Wong. Yeah, I live at 1010 59th Avenue, Fairmont Heights, Maryland. Hi, Kirsten. Hi. <laughs> um, like, I just want to put this on record because, like, when I spoke to her, first of all, she stopped answering my phone call. I guess y'all got call ID. And then I don't, she, she told me she don't know what days you work, what hours you come in, you come in whenever you want. That was inappropriate. If y'all all work together, y'all supposed to be a team. Miss Wong. Can we talk like, no. can we, can yeah, we oh, discuss okay, okay. this yeah, offline? Yeah, we, I mean, because I'm getting ready to leave, but I just want, you know, we've been through a lot going back and forth, going back and forth, back and forth, and she the only reason why I came down here today. Okay. Because of how disrespectful she was on the phone, and, you know, and I just want to let her know, you know, phone calls, recall stuff, too, is not only in person. When you're in person, there's a camera right here. You don't know what on the other line. Well, you know, we got the whole conversation. So I just want to let her know, like, you can't be rude. You can't, you cannot do that at a time. Like, she wanted, like, he told you, she told us that why didn't we just stop that repay more you at the door? Who does that? Right. It was at the last minute. minute. Yeah, at the last minute. And then so, we had to have people stand outside because we had to mop the floor. We, the females had to use one, all the females and men had to use one bathroom because the bathroom was nasty. And then on top of that, I had booked it for a Saturday, but then I guess you came, you had a... You, yeah, we had a, a right, previous so event scheduled it, for Saturday. It was, you know, the contract been, it, I mean, it's been breached ever since day one. So I'm just like, and then 
I mean, I just felt like that, you know, we was going back and forth. We was playing phone tag. I'm leaving messages. I emailed. And, I mean, she just told me that she wanted to talk to me afterwards. But I just feel like it was just unacceptable. And I know what customer service is. Mm -hmm. I guess. So, you know, and y'all um, saying that y'all need money for the town. I mean, if y'all show, you know, this, if y'all show the people that's been here or even people that's just moving here, you just don't know how far y'all can go. So we are definitely trying to change the culture. And again, we do apologize for the experience you had to experience. And we're going to make some changes. Okay. Trust me, changes for the better. Just All give right. us a little bit of time to work it out. And then one last thing I do want to say, Ms. Dawson out here, I do want to tell her thank you because she's if, online. Oh, yeah, Ms. Dawson, because, you know, she was dead. Hey, thank God to open up the door because the person that was supposed to open the door was not there. Like, you know, she had to open up the door. So if. She opened up the door for us and let us in, and she helped us clean up and all that. So I do want to give a thank you to us. A thank you, Ms. Dawson. Ms. Dawson, did you hear it? Is she still online? Yeah. Yeah, she's still, she's still online. online. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you write your phone number down? I'm going to give you a call later so we can discuss some other things. Let me see your agenda real quick. Are, are there any more citizens that would like to? Um, Ms. Joyce, please step up. Thank you. I want to speak on behalf of the Citizens Association. Um, the Blue Line Quarter. I'm sorry, we, you say your name. Oh, I'm Joyce White, Vice President of Citizens Association. Thank you. Um, we have been attending the Saturday morning meetings for the Blue Line Quarter. Um, uh, Angela also Brooks will be coming to be filmed in my house on March 11th, um, so that's it with that. And another thing, the Citizens Association will be walking a petition for the potential funeral home that's coming. Uh, the neighbors don't know about it. Um, and the neighbors that do know about it at this point is having a problem with it. So we're going to walk a petition about that. And that's all I had to say. Okay. Do you know the uh, location? The, the the barbershop. Oh, the barbershop. Oh, the barbershop. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, you yeah. said March 11th, also Brooks will be at your property? At my house. Um, what's the event? Uh, no, it's it, it, invitation only. It's concerning um, the Blue Line Quarter. Okay. I wasn't planning on attending. I was just asking for clarity. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are there any more citizens that would like to um, participate? <clears throat> Mr. Bronhart? And then once that's done, we step. We got another question online. Okay. So I guess I get three minutes now, so I'm going to hurry up. Um, like Ms. Joyce said, and, and again, I'm Martez Barnhart, President of the Citizen Association. Um, we, we will be conducting a uh, survey slash petition about the potential uh, funeral home. Um, we are quite sure that a lot of people are not aware of that. And we also know that the people that are aware of it are not in, um, in agreement with it. Um, we want to know what is the standards from the state and the county about funeral homes going in residential. We'd like the town to be able to get that information. If not, we'll find out as well. We could work together to get that information. Uh, the next thing we, we would like to go ahead and make sure that we address is we had a meeting on January the 22nd um, with Pepco Escalon and uh, HIP about the microgrid at 60th place, the net zero homes. Um, some information that was given that day from PEPCO, I'm not sure, that, did the town receive that information? Yes. It did. Okay, um, we still had some concerns um, about the microgrid, the material that is made out of, the potential uh, health hazard that it can expose, and we just want to know, I mean, where's the town at with this? We talk about economic development. This is a new development in the town, and this is a microgrid. So you're talking about electricity, you're talking about chemicals, you're talking about um, health and safety. Um, and I know that um, Councilwoman Barnhart was on that call, Mayor Stewart was on that call, and Councilwoman St. John was on that call. So are you guys 
up to par or informed about the information that Pepco had given about the microgrid with his maid out of Ms. Barnhart asked a question about was it safe or not. And one of the uh, experts online said that it had a um, low percentage rate, a low percentage rate of exposure. So just want to know, did you guys get any information about that? Um, other than what was presented on the call and in the follow-up email, mm -hmm. that's all I have. Um, I don't have any additional information. I didn't receive anything additional from them. Mm -hmm. And I thought the I thought they explained everything. They had all the, uh, what are they, the subject, subject matter experts, experts yeah. and the scientists that explained everything, I, well, on terms I thought I could understand. So I didn't have an issue with anything that was said. But however, I don't live next door to it either. And if mm -hmm. you do have concerns, you have a right, a right to voice them mm -hmm. until all of your concerns are addressed. So I do understand. But I didn't see any issues with what they said. Okay, so just real quick. Um, this microgrid, I'm going to put it out there. If it potentially has an uh, explosion, this thing can go five mile radius. Five miles. So it ain't about who's living next door to it. This is a five mile radius incident that could potentially harm people. So I think it's very imperative that not just the people that live next door to us should find out about it, but the town as a whole, because it's a project that the town has endorsed. So Benzo, the town did endorse it, and this was prior before y'all getting here. So I'm gonna make sure that's clear. So you guys are not informed about it, but you should be getting informed about it because it's a current, it's an ongoing project. Absolutely right. But Benz, though, did this thing have some kind of safety and health risk, like he said online, a, a small risk, a small risk is a risk. You, you know, if you, if you, if you use... Ms. You, Barnhart, but there's a risk in driving a car, it's a risk in correct. walking out your door. I mean, it's a small risk in everything we do. That's correct. I mean, they, they've done the science. I don't, I don't know how to say it in layman's terms, mm -hmm. but they've done the science. Okay. And when we asked them, did they ever have an explosion before or has anything ever blew up, they said no. Because it's new. No, they said they had one in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. I was going to say that, too. Um, I do agree with the fact that there isn't many things to compare it with, um, just listening to them. But I definitely also agree with the fact that it is very low risk. I think that as far as the citizens, it's really, you know what I'm saying, kind of up to the rest of the people and the, res uh, the residents that are within that area. And if they're not speaking up, well, first we have to make sure they have the information. If they have the information um, and they're not speaking up, then I would assume that um, they're fine with it. But, I mean, just doing our due diligence to make sure that anybody within that five-mile radius, if you want to say five-mile radius, we definitely want to make sure that they have that information um, and are able to weigh in as well. Uh, sure. We had three kids. Representing the Citizens Association to combat it. If they say it's low rich, they don't know. The projects they're talking about haven't even been built yet. The one on the military base is in the middle of a desert. So it's not around any residential property. This will be the first. Like they said, five miles radius, it affects Chevrolet, Sea Pleasant, other communities. And we wanted to know that the town check into it even more, like we're doing. Mm -hmm. we, we have not checked into it. It's actually good that you all are really checking on it, only because I don't know if the former uh, council even thought about checking into it. Uh, town manager, have you checked into it? Yeah, I'm following. As a matter of fact, I complimented them on having the scientists there. So I have to uh, check with the scientists that get back. Uh, and I've been following any news and research So Is there any particular reason why they chose Fairmont Heights instead of any other municipality in the area to start a project? I don't know the answer to that question. That's a good question. I don't know. Because for something, for, so, 
for something so large as this coming to our town, why wasn't given to another town like such as Upper Marlboro, Laurel, or these other areas, and it's just come here for us to be testers? And I do believe that. that question was posed. It was kind of tested around. That's how it's getting paid from. It's a lot of money at risk. Okay. So a suggestion, uh, let me hold on. A suggestion is maybe we can host another meeting, yeah. open it up to the entire community, mm -hmm. yes. and Here open it up to other municipalities to join this meeting, mm -hmm. and then have everybody, and Mr. Rumi, could you coordinate this for us? Um, have everybody that was on that line initially yeah. back here in person so right. that we can have a community forum. Yeah. And then from there, if the community says they're okay with it, then can we move forward? Oh, oh sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Can, we, can we reach out to the other municipalities that we're connected to, Chevrolet, Capital High, C Pleasant, and um, radius. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. within that five mile radius? Right. Okay. Yeah. District right. Heights, maybe, because it, it touched that area too. Fine. Okay. Ms. Uh, okay. Councilwoman Down. batteries at that time. Right. Right. So they so my concern is for them to make such a dramatic dramatic change, to me they should have come back to the town of Emma Heights and said, We're redesigning this mm -hmm. and we want to make you all aware. Right. So do you know whether or not they came to you all saying that this is going to change? All right. Yeah. But All I, right. I certainly like the idea of inviting other council, I mean, other right. municipalities uh -huh. and, and have them come back. Uh, I, was at, I was on that call, too. This is the scientist. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and look at my notes. Okay. Yeah. All right, like so it. that's so Good. that'll be our next step. Um, I'm having Ms. Sarumi coordinate a, a meeting for right. other municipalities right. and the residents in the community and, and get that team that yeah. presented right. to us to come back and speak to the community. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is that a, is that suitable for you, Mr. Barnhart? Oh, sure. Okay. That's good. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. We're working together. Um, I would like to pose the question too. If she is not able to get enough responses from other municipalities by have. the next date, will we still move forward or allow um, more time? Uh, so we'll allow more time yeah, so that we can get full participation. Set that standard in advance. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are there any of the citizens participation? Going once. Go on twice. Okay. I have another um, question online, and it looks like Ms. Kim said she couldn't hear. I'm not sure if this is still current. That was just two minutes ago. Um, uh, question is regards to the QR code data. Um, how are the QR code data, which is collected by the town, being used as a communication tool to keep residents notified of meetings, events, et cetera? Tell them we plan to roll this out by May. We're going to start using the data we're collecting. We just got to figure out how and what we're going to use it for. But we're going to start looking at utilizing the data we've been collecting over this year, um, especially with your newsletter. Mm -hmm. And possibly changing some of the information that's on that. Yeah, form, possibly. exactly. So we will start using that information very soon. Any other questions? Okay. I will accept a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night, everybody. All right. <coughs>